Welcome back to the Trading Den. And in today's module, we will be going over the power of three, also abbreviated AMD. So A, it equals accumulation, M equals manipulation, and D equals distribution. This is one of the ways the markets move. The markets love to move off of the power of three. Now you're gonna understand why they like to move off of them in this video. So this is a depiction of what the power of three would look like. So it starts off with a consolidation, the accumulation phase. So right here in the gray box, we have our accumulation phase. We have a move down and an immediate displacement back inside of the range, right? This red box represents the manipulation leg. Why is this manipulation? Because before we get the move higher, we get a run on all of these sell stops. So we have sell side resting beneath all these lows. So we have sell side and we manipulate lower. And if the overall draw for the day is higher, or if you're on the lower time frames and it happens to be somewhere up here, we manipulate lower to displace higher and then have our distribution phase, which will usually happen pretty quick if we are in an immediate reaction in the markets. So this depiction right here represents the power of three, accumulation or consolidation, manipulation, and then we have our distribution. So another way you can use the power of three is whenever we have our manipulation, a good thing to have it into is a higher time frame uh, PD array. So a higher time frame fair value gap, like a hourly if you're trading the five minute, a four hour on the 15 minute, or a 15 minute fair value gap on the one minute chart. So this right here, coming down into a higher time frame PD array is one of the most high probability manipulation legs you can have if you have this displacement up and then you can take your entry here. So if we take a look here at the four hour chart on NASDAQ, we can see this actually happened on Friday. So we have this big bullish fair value gap resting here on the four hour chart. So we have a four hour fair value gap. And if we head down to the one minute chart, we can see, I'm gonna get rid of that box, you know we're inside of that fair value gap. You can see right here, what are we doing? We are consolidating or we are accumulating for what? well the power of three so what do we have beneath all these engineered lows we have sell side resting here retail is jamming their stops up beneath all of these lows here then what do we have a swing lower remember we're in that higher time frame pd array so we have our manipulation here sorry let me turn this red and then what do you see after that we have our distribution straight off of open to have a huge move higher. So right here we see a consolidation phase, which is the accumulation, manipulation lower, and then distribution higher. Now this is on the one minute chart. This works on every time frame. So let's hop into another example. So right here we are on the five minute of NASDAQ. And what do you see in all of this price action? Chop, right? Chop means accumulation. Accumulation reacts to expansion afterwards so we have our accumulation phase we then have expansion so whenever you see accumulation in the markets you don't want to be trading it but you want to be aware that after accumulation happens expansions happen so right here we have all of this accumulation within here so here we have accumulation within this tight range and what do you see look at this tiny wick Imagine how many people are getting stuck in this chop right here. As soon as we sweep this sell side, we get displacement back inside of the range. What do you see right here? Fair value gap. What do you see right here? Breaker block. We get our distribution phase to target the buy side liquidity. So you have your manipulation right here. And then as soon as we get those run on stops, you get your distribution phase higher. Now, if we also zoom out to the hourly chart, what do you see here? Internal range liquidity, fair value gap. What do you see? Manipulation into a higher time frame PD array, the one hour fair value gap, then we get that distribution higher. Here we are on the four hour chart. What do you see throughout all of here? Accumulation all throughout here. So we have our accumulation phase happening on the higher time frame. Then what do we see here? A run on sell stops. 
so now we have a run on sell stops and what do you see immediately after distribution higher this is why the power of three is one of the best ways to trade you have a run on stops so this low shouldn't be ran until we hit that overall draw on liquidity and the way we confirm that is by displacement so we have displacement higher than this fair value gap right here we actually don't even need to come down here because we form an smt with this low right here on the es es came down here uh got inside of this fair value gap and then that is a hourly or 15 minute smt so nq does not need to come down here anymore and we're going to get into smt in a little bit but as you see we have our accumulation we have our manipulation and then we have our distribution this right here the power of three is why the turtle soup starts every move we accumulate turtle soup lows turtle soup highs and then we distribute to the actual draw on liquidity so now we're going to get into smt divergence this is when two correlating assets example the nq and the es those are two correlating assets in the financial markets have a divergence against each other so over here on the left we have the es over here on the right we have the nq notice we make this move down go up then we come down and we sweep this low right here so now we have a low taken on the es notice on the nq we make this move up and fail to take this low so now we have an smt divergence because one correlating asset has taken a low and the other has failed to take the low we displace higher confirmation entry then we distribute higher so this can be also used on the power of three whenever we have an accumulation phase one of the assets takes out the low or the high and then we have the distribution in the opposing way so one of the highest probability SMTs is whenever we have a higher time frame PD array, right? Remember, you're trading blindly if you're not using higher time frame PD arrays. So we come down into a, let's say, a four hour fair value gap on the NQ, and the ES has taken this low. NQ doesn't need to take this low because we're in that higher time frame uh, fair value gap. So we go straight up, get your confirmation entry on the lower time frame for the distribution to the overall draw on liquidity. So another thing you can use with SMT is the market maker model video. You can use market maker uh, models based off of SMTs. Whenever you get your smart money reversal, right, and that is uh, defined by power of three, all of this comes together to make the most sense when you are using it together. So SMT is whenever we have a divergence between correlating assets so right here we have the nq and the es pulled up against each other what do you see right here with this low on the nq we have taken that low on the nq so we have an smt right here's that same low you can see my crosshairs on both sides of the screen so there's that same low failure to take that low out with the es so now we have an smt divergence on the 15 minute chart so right here we can use that low so we have this smt Let's go to the higher time frames to see what's happening there. So right here on the NQ, we can see we are trading in that fair value gap, which is the higher time frame PD array, and then we get our distribution higher. So on this example, I showed you on the power of three. Notice we have the power of three happening, manipulation beneath lows inside of a higher time frame PD array with an SMT. This is your highest probability setup. So we have that SMT and then we get our distribution phase with the power of three to buy side liquidity. So here we are again on the ES and the NQ hourly chart. What do you notice with this low right here? NQ has taken it out. ES has not taken it out. So we are forming an SMT. Now notice what's happening on this hourly time frame. We are accumulating. Look at the ES. ES is obviously in this accumulation phase and Q as well we are in this accumulation phase so we are getting a power of three now how do we move out of that look at this low the swing low right here we form an SMT SMT let's go to the daily chart oh here we are on the daily chart look at that low we come into a daily fair value gap and remember the market maker model video I said the hourly is the uh, complemented by the daily chart so now we have a daily PD array so we get our distribution higher with the power of three smt and a market maker model 
So once again, right here is your manipulation beneath a low. So we have manipulation, we've had our accumulation, then as soon as we form this SMT inside of that higher time frame PD array, we distribute higher, taking out the buy side liquidity. All right, and the last section of this module, we're gonna be going over 8.30 and midnight, and I'm gonna show you one more example of all of these things aligning all into one uh, play. So 8.30 and midnight, this, this right here is one of the ways, also the power of three, are the ways I find my daily bias, which you will see in the next section of the trading den. 8.30 and midnight is one of my favorite ways to identify where we are in the markets, right? If we're below midnight open, right? Literal time, so the time on the clock, you'll go to your charts or you can use the indicator. I'm gonna give you guys all the indicators I use, but if we're below midnight, it is a uh, discount. So ICT con concepts are all identified by discount and premium arrays. If we are below midnight, it is a discount. If we are above midnight, it is a premium. Now, 8.30, what does that mean? If 8.30 open is below midnight and price is below midnight, it means that we are in a deep discount. So if price is below 8.30 and midnight, we are in a deep discount for the day. If it is above 8.30 and midnight, it is a deep premium for the day. So if we are above 8.30 and midnight and we are bearish on the day. That means we're in deep premium and we want to be scouting for shorts. If it is below 8.30 and midnight and we are bullish, right? It is all based upon the bias for the day as well. We are in a deep discount. So here we are on NQ. This is Friday's price action. You notice right here we have 8.30 and midnight right by each other. And on a typical day, you wouldn't want to be trading if we are just around, if midnight and 8.30 are pretty much overlapping unless we have a high impact news day, right? Friday we had NFP. Look at what we do. We dump below both of these. So we are in a deep discount. Notice we accumulate here, expansion higher. And what happens right around these two prices? Accumulate even more. So we accumulate below midnight and 8.30 in a deep discount to then expand higher to go to the overall draw on liquidity. These times on the literal clock play a huge role in price oh here we are on thursday what do you notice they're pretty close together and what do we do all of am session we chop right around both of these times what happens we get a dump lower order pairing beneath this low in a deep discount expansion higher and then during pm session we go hit the overall draw on liquidity right we expand higher but before we do so see but before we do so we come into a deep discount pair orders beneath a low to then go to the draw on liquidity all this time is doing is giving you a bias right we were bullish on thursday so we look for a deep discount and then we look for setups to target buy side liquidity. So here we are on the NASDAQ five minute again. We see midnight open is all the way down here. Where is 830? All the way up here. So for the day, we are in a deep discount all the way up here. Notice what happens. We are not really displacing through highs, right? Displacement is fair value gaps. Notice we have them right here, but this right here is displacement lower. And if we are super far away from midnight open in either direction, price loves to gravitate back towards midnight open. So right here, we are in that deep premium. Notice we displace through all of these lows and gravitate right to midnight open. Midnight open is true open. So right here, we pretty much close a doji candle. Market closes at 4 p.m., right here it closes exactly on midnight open so if we are in either direction extremely far away right we're at 593 for midnight and we're the all the way up here over 200 points away from midnight and we are bearish on the day price loves to gravitate back towards that midnight opening price so here we are on both nasdaq and es i'm going to show you the example friday that gives you everything all in one Right here in this little piece of price action, chopping right under 8.30 and midnight opening price, right? We are 
pairing orders beneath this low. But guess what else we're doing? We are accumulating in a deep discount right here. So right here in this accumulation zone, so we have the power of three happening. So we have the power of three happening right here. Look at ES, ES is right here. So ES is accumulating as well. So here we have ES's accumulation. Right here is that accumulation on the five minute chart. Right here is a 15 minute fair value gap. So we're gonna mark that off on the NQ as well. So notice what happens. We So here's that 15 minute fair value gap. Look what happens, power of three. We swipe sell side, stopping everybody out right here into a higher time frame PD array. But not only that, not only that, we form an SMT at this low. So now we have an SMT, right? Right there's the crosshairs. ES is nowhere close to taking that low out. And guess what? We're in that higher time frame PD array. What happens? We distribute to that overall draw on liquidity. This is the highest probability type of setup that you will find. Turtle souping lows, pairing orders, SMT, power of three, manipulation, higher time frame PD array, distribute higher. That is one of the most high probability setups you will find. So let's move on to the next module.